A blessed Sunday morning to each and everyone who are joining in our worship service today. We bring greetings to those who are worshiping with us through our FB live streaming, our YouTube channel, and over local radio 95.1 DYSR FM. We greet the entire world, our brothers and sisters, UCCP members, and those from other denominations who are joining with us this morning in this virtual worship. We also greet our fellow Selimanians and alumni from the different parts of the globe, faculty, staff, friends, and friends of friends. Welcome to Siliman University Church 930 worship service on a beautiful Sunday morning in this university beside the sea in Dumaguete City. Today is a very special day for us as we join the Association of Christian Universities and Colleges in Asia, the United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia, and Silliman University in the culmination of the pioneering virtual joint consultation and thanksgiving worship for the Akuka's 45th, United Board's 100th, and Silliman University's 120th anniversary celebration. It is an honor and privilege given to us, Silliman University Church, for being chosen to host in this great Thanksgiving worship celebration virtually participated by these partners. We welcome to our pulpit this morning the Reverend Dr. Boyong Lee, the Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean of Faculty, Yonsei University in Korea, as our preacher in today's Thanksgiving celebration. She will be formally introduced in the proper time by Dr. Nancy E. Chapman, the President of the United Board. Today, we will also be joined by the leaders of our partners in the Akuka, United Board, and Silman University, as they will extend their greetings and words of welcome in this momentous celebration. In behalf of the Silliman University Church pastoral team, the Church Council and its whole congregation, our greetings and congratulations to the Association of Christian Universities and Colleges in Asia, United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia, and Silliman University in its 45th, 100th, and 120th anniversary celebration, respectively, upholding the theme envisioning Christian higher education, our preferred futures. We pray for God's blessings, guidance, and wisdom as you continue to work together as partners in carrying out Christ's teaching ministry and be his faithful witnesses, especially in these very critical times, and as you are being confronted and challenged with this new platform of learning. God bless and congratulations once again. We welcome in today's worship our very own president of Silliman University and president of the Association of Christian Universities and Colleges in Asia, Dr. Betty Sernal Makan, as she welcomes the participants in this gathering together with Mr. Ricardo Balbido Jr., the chairperson of the Board of Trustees of Silliman University. The Executive Vice President of the United Board, Mr. Ricky M. Cheng, will also be giving his greetings. Our scripture reading this morning will be read by Dr. Yong Long Lee, the President of Changyong Christian University in Taiwan. Our thanks also to the different representatives who will be leading us in our community prayer. Dr. Kazuhiro Muri, President, Tokyo Women's University, Japan. Judge Benjamin D. Turgano, President, Wesleyan University, Philippines. Dr. Christiana Singh, Principal, Lady Dog College, India. And Dr. Mercy Pushpalata from the United Board. Dr. Angela Y. Ching Wong, Vice President for the Program of the United Board. Nathalie Magat, Junior Student of Silman University. Dr. Rare Paul Leda, Veda Setepu, Vice Rector, Universitas Christian, Indonesia. Our profound thanks also to Dr. Wilma Wawet Tejero, the General Secretary of the Akuka, for facilitating this event. 
The pastoral team will be leading us in our worship service today as liturgist and minister. Our endless thanks to our church music team, Professor Isabel Vista, for our beautiful and soothing music at the pipe organ. Ms. Allen Daedem Kesed Hovita on the piano, and the Covenant Choir for today's anthem with soprano duet by Julia Zamar and Cheryline Antonio, conducted by Dr. Elizabeth Susan Suarez, who will also be leading us in our hymn singing together with the volunteer song leaders. The United Board's 100th year celebration has a centennial anthem entitled Cherished Moments, intentionally composed for this centennial celebration, which has three versions, a cathedral version, duet version, and an ethnic version. For our offertory song this morning is the duet version of this centennial hymn performed by Ms. Cherilyn Antonio, soprano, and Mr. Rigel Suarez, tenor, and Dr. Elizabeth Susan Suarez as the pianist. And the other two versions, the ethnic version is sung and accompanied by faculty, staff, and students of Silliman University, mainly from the College of Performing and Visual Arts, directed by Dr. Elizabeth Susan Suarez, of which the instruments used in this arrangement are Filipino ethnic instruments. The cathedral version is sung by representatives of Akuka and the Changchi Choir from Changchi College, Chinese University of Hong Kong. These two versions will be played in the ending parts of our worship service, together with a short video presentation about the Akuka, the Yobicheya, and Siliman University. And we are requesting everyone to please stay with us until the end of this broadcast as we together witness this short video presentation for us to also have a glimpse in the life and services of our partners. So please stay with us. Our never-ending thanks to our technical team for making all our online church activities possible. Once again, thank you so much. And just a kind reminder that everything in this worship service is pre-recorded. All the hymns are retrieved from our previous worship services. So please be guided. Our profound thanks to all of you for your continued support to the church through prayers and offerings. Thank you to those who have sent in your offerings, church members, friends, and our online worshipers through bank deposit, online transfer, and to those who made requests for your offering to be picked up in your areas. Thank you so much. Your offerings have helped the church in sustaining its ministry in these very challenging times. And yes, for our church members within Metro Domagati area who wish to receive printed order of worship, please do let us know by calling or texting the church office or any of the pastors so we can facilitate your need. For those who also would like to give your offerings, you can deposit through our bank accounts or you can use the online transfer through Instapay or PesoNet. Please follow the instructions now being flashed on the screen for your guidance. And please send us a copy of your deposit slip or message us for easy tracking and proper acknowledgement and receipt. Once again, thank you so much for your unending support to the church. At this moment, we would like to extend our prayers and condolences to the bereaved family of Mr. Nehemiah Quixote, who died last Tuesday, July 13. He is the brother of Mr. Mansueto Quixote, our church auditor. Our deepest sympathy and prayers also to the bereaved family of Mrs. Myrna de Jesus, who died last July 14. Visual services were made. An interment of her cremains was done yesterday, Saturday, July 17. Let us include them in our prayers for God's comfort and strength. Attention everyone, we would like to inform you that next Sunday, July 25, will be the first mid-year virtual baccalaureate and commencement exercise of Silliman University. And since the commencement exercise will be incorporated with the baccalaureate service, we have anticipated for a longer hour of our service 
So our worship will start at 9 o'clock in the morning. This is a little earlier to our regular worship service. So please take note, our worship service on July 25, next Sunday, will start at 9 a.m. for our baccalaureate service. Please be guided. Thank you so much. For the rest of the announcement, please browse our parish news uploaded on our FB page. And please continue following us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Silliman University Church, for updates, announcements, and notifications. Thank you very much. Once again, good morning. Mayong buntag. Magandang umaga. Good morning. Welcome to this pioneering virtual joint consultation of the United Board, Silliman University, and the Association of Christian Universities and Colleges in Asia. The question that nags us these days is, how do we view the preferred futures of Christian higher education in Asia. When the coronavirus left its deadly mark around the globe, one of the sectors adversely affected is education. The sudden shift from in-person instruction to online learning, or others say flexible learning or blended learning, the immediate concern and ringing question was, how prepared are our teaching and non-teaching personnel for the sudden, newly adopted online delivery of learning? How do we manage change? Or firstly, what changes should we be aiming for, and in what order? At Silliman University, the pandemic necessitated a quick review of our institutional strategic plans identified before the pandemic, distill those essential steps to be taken in order to deal with the demands on higher education in this current health crisis, and as we prepare to clear the hurdles towards the 21st century education. As a 120-year-old institution with a Christian mission of teaching, preaching, and healing, we call upon ourselves within the institution and our partners to help one another and to forge ahead as one in meeting the challenges of the time. The United Board now on its 100th anniversary, has been instrumental in the formation of the Association of Christian Universities and Colleges in Asia, now 45 years since its founding, a step that earlier on saw the importance of collaboration among institutions in the region. Together, we face the challenge. What are our preferred futures for higher education in Asia and beyond? More specifically, in this joint consultation, how can we in Christian higher education institutions address issues of access, equity, and inclusion? And in this COVID-19 and post-pandemic situation, how can we continue to work together in our teaching, research, and community service to heal the land, address issues of climate justice, and together be stewards of a sustainable future for the generations to come? These questions prompt us to dig deep into our intellectual and spiritual resource. And we may not even have definitive answers at this time, but certainly we find ways to respond to the challenges. May this joint consultation allow us to construct a roadmap for our preferred future of higher education. A grounded hope for the future, a new narrative of education. Welcome to the conversation table.
A blessed day to all, to all our partners in the ACOCA and the United Board. We welcome you in a special Thanksgiving service here in Siliman University Church to culminate our joint virtual consultation. We always allocate time for worship and reflection to thank God for this blessing of collaboration and sharing ideas, experiences with you. A blessing to have gathered experts with the same core values and exchange knowledge on how our institutions can continue to be leaders in addressing social issues. We give thanks to God for giving each participant the knowledge and experience to speak with wisdom and insight on the ways of transformation our world needs and our role in setting that transformation in motion. We give thanks to God for the partnership formed through ACUCA and the United Board Networks, partnership that continue to empower and help one another, especially in such a critical time for the future of Christian education. We give thanks for the 120 years of God's goodness and grace given to Siliman University, 100 years for the United Board, and 45 years for ACUCA. These years that stand as testaments to God's grace and mercy will continue to remind us of what God can do through us as His instruments in the incoming in the coming years. Most importantly, this service is our time to reflect on what the ACUCA United Board and Siliman University have discussed in the past two days using the Christian lens because in every step we plan to take after this gathering, we must remain centered on God and allow Him to direct our every move. Worship is an essential culmination to any activity to remind us to whom we are doing everything for and to whom we owe everything to. In envisioning our preferred futures, let us make sure that in our delivery of knowledge, it will always be Christ-centered. Only when we are guided by our Lord Jesus Christ can we continue to embody His teachings and bring about the vital transformation that only He can bring and sustain. What we decide on doing from this point onwards can be the change needed in education and in creating our preferred futures. But first, as in any moment of decision making, we must remember Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9, which says, We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. In this moment, let us call our, to God and ask Him to be always in our midst. Thank you and good day. Greetings on a beautiful Sunday morning. No matter what the weather is at your location, I hope your heart will always be calm and shining with positive energy. Mr. Ricardo Balbido, Dr. Betty McCann, President of Silliman University, as well as ACUGA, Presidents and staff of ACUGA member institutions, friends, distinguished staff, alumni, and students of Silliman University, distinguished guests, and members of this congregation. This year, marks a significant moment for all three organizations, Silliman University, the United Board, and ACUGA. All are celebrating its 120th, 100th, and 45th anniversary, respectively. The combined service of more than 265 years of service to Christian higher education means multi-generations of leaders have been nurtured for their respective communities, the region, and for the world. Today also marks the conclusion of a three days consultation meeting on envisioning the preferred future for Christian higher education, which many top speakers and educators had spoken eloquently 
and convincingly that there are special characteristics in Christian higher education that should be preserved and even emphasized, for they are the core of our shared mission. If we have to sum up with one unique character of the many core values of hundreds of Christian institutions across the many regions, I would like to think whole person education is what we would want to achieve for our future generations of students, regardless of their own faith traditions. I would like to congratulate to all the members of the Akuga and the leadership of Dr. Makan, who led Akuga in a highly unprecedented time of the pandemic, yet paving a strong foundation for future Akuga leaders to follow. This morning, you will be entertained by the lovely music and choir performance of the Silaman University Choir, of which will be the centennial anthem, Cherished Moment, which was composed for the celebration of the United Board's centennial. The music and the lyrics reflect very much the aspiration of the United Board of another century of service to Christian higher education. I wish all of you a good day. Thank you. Good morning. It is my pleasure to introduce my friend and colleague, the Reverend Dr. Boyong Lee, who will deliver today's sermon. Reverend Dr. Lee, an ordained United Methodist elder, has served as Senior Vice President of Academic Affairs and Dean of the Faculty at the Isle of School of Theology for the past four years. She previously served in senior faculty positions at the Pacific School of Religion and at the Graduate Theological Union. Her scholarly and theological work reflect her commitment to social justice, and she also considers herself a feminist communitarian educator in her leadership and pedagogical practices. Reverend Dr. Lee received her first degree at Yonsei University, a longtime member of the United Board Network, and she has served in numerous leadership positions at the United Board as a member of our Board of Trustees. We are deeply grateful to Reverend Dr. Lee for so generously agreeing to deliver this morning's sermon on today's scripture. Thank you.
We come, for God gathers us here with a community called faith. We come celebrating the mighty acts of God here and abroad. We come, for the Lord our God called us partners in service. Lord, we come before you, offering our thanksgiving, lifting to you our vision towards a global community where education is anchored in the good news. We are your people, O God, diverse in culture, but united to worship you in spirit and in truth. We come, for God welcomes us here into that home called grace, where God will manifest his presence, filling our hearts with his goodness and love. God clothes us with his goodness and love. We are given the robe of hope to know that better days are coming, where strangers become partners in service, embraced with kindness and love. We come, for God reunites us here as sisters and brothers in that family called love and faith in Jesus the Christ. We come to praise God, the model of justice and the mirror of righteousness, where everyone is called as children of the living God, where the broken and the hopeless are cradled in God's peace. Here, in this time of worship, we gather to praise God. Please rise as we sing our hymn of praise. Let us pray together. Lord, we come to praise you as our God and King. In this time of worship, open our hearts and minds to the ways in which you present yourself to us as those who need to be ministered to, to those who need to hear the good news, to those who need to be touched by your blessings and love. May our praise not be with our lips alone, but in the acts that we give to those who need our love and care, 
as you gather your people from around the globe. Encounter us, O God, as we celebrate your faithfulness upon our lives. We lift up to you the wonder of your creation, the people whom you called children, who are praising your name. Amen. You may now take your seats. Let us now come to the act of confession. The outstretched hand, the cry for help, the lonely look of desperation surrounded us. Yet we are tempted to turn aside and look the other way. But the Lord who is good is calling us by name to come to him, to drink from his living waters, to listen to his voice and follow what Christ did. Today, we are challenged to do the same in this world full of hate and chaos. We are all desperate to be united with God and with one another. Yet, we refuse to do what he expects from us. Let us now come to God, bringing all our sins that hinders us to obey God's call to feed the hungry, clothe the sick, and visit those who are held in prison. Let us confess before the Lord of justice, healing, and love. Let us now pray our prayer of confession. Holy One, we are like sheep that stray from your fold. We never realize that we too are the perpetually hungry, even in spiritual need, and at times in physical want. We are the naked, with wounds exposed and bleeding, and yet we never admit. We are the sick, fevered, chilled, and in pain, yet we are too stubborn to ask help and healing. We are the strangers, separated from others and even from ourselves, and still pretended that we are okay. Hear us now as we confess our brokenness and our need. Hear our silent murmurs, O God. Hear what truly is in our hearts that is beyond words to utter. Heal us from what we conceal before others. Help us to see your love amid suffering so we can respond with faith and walk in the way Jesus has taught us. Forgive us for our pride and arrogance and change our hearts so we can truly go where you want us to go. Amen. Our Creator God sees our hunger and gives us food. Christ the Healer touches our wounds, offering comfort and blessed relief. The Spirit blows through us, cools our fever, and eases our pain. God sees and touches and heals our wounds. Friends, we are forgiven and restored. Receive God's pardon and let us now live in peace with God and with one another. Amen.
let's pray for hope. Lord, our God, in this time of crisis, we thank you that you have given us an enduring hope. We thank you through our faith in you and in your son, Jesus Christ, that you enter into every breathing heart and make new lives that have been torn asunder by the darkness of this world. We pray today for those who have lost hope and for those who have never heard it. Grant to us and to those we lift before you in our heart. We pray for hope for those who are lonely and afraid, for those who are hungry and deprived, and for those who are victims of war and violence. We pray for us, your people, that we may become instrument of hope to others, to our families, to our communities. Grant us courage to bring hope to the people who we, we met, who, who we, we meet each, uh, each day. We ask all this to you, knowing that you are our hope and our salvation and very present help in times of trouble and the one whose purpose is to grant new and abundant life to us and our world. Praise be to your name. Amen. Lord, our God, your people are now struggling to survive in the midst of the pandemic that we are facing. We pray that the world will know your healing touch and your forgiving heart. That those who have been hurt by insincere actions and unkind words will hear your healing voice. That those whose lives are filled with dark thoughts or fears will know your peace. For those whose lives are broken by distress, broken by fear, broken by anger, broken by pain, broken by illness, may your healing power and your gentle touch bring warmth and comfort, life and wholeness and restoration to those fractured lives and souls. We also pray for all the frontliners and healthcare providers as they offer their lives in service to your people. Raise our eyes upwards to see the struggling patient and the exhausted caregiver. We pray for wholeness and restoration of both minds and spirits for all the struggling people these days. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Lord, listen to your children the universe. We pray in gratitude and praise. You were there at the beginning of all things, shaping our world and preparing it for us. You have provided the mountains and the trees, the waters and the earth. Help us 
to be cave takers of your gifts, protecting the land from abuse, and ready to share with all in need. Show us how to use our science and technology in creative, not destructive ways. Deepen our awareness of our connectedness with all your creation so that future generations will also enjoy every blessing. Lord, awaken your people to our responsibilities as stewards of your wonderful creation. We offer this prayer to you, the creator of all things in this world. Amen. Dear God, we hear of peace only as a faraway dream. We long for it in our lives, in the lives of our families, our friends, and our countries. But with each passing day, the prospect for peace seems to be increasingly frustrating. Restlessness seems to be the order of our present existence. Our inner restlessness rooted in various anxieties, our social restlessness rooted in the evils that go on around us, the restlessness of the world plagued by conflicts of all sorts. We pray this morning, dear God, that we may experience that peace that passeth all understanding. Let our less restless hearts rest in you, O God, and give us your peace. This we may pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who beckons us into the vision of peace. Amen. Lord, listen to your children Dear God, you are our patience, our strength, our light, and our counsel. You have been faithful in guiding us, especially with our beloved teachers, in what they have to say to the students, and you make them responsive to your wisdom. Be with us and be with them, faculty members of every institution at all times. Please give them a share in the gifts of your Holy Spirit, of wisdom, understanding, counsel, courage, knowledge, value devotion to you, and a desire not to displease you. In the challenges they face and in their hurts, may they be healed through your presence and comfort. With Christ as the greatest teacher, we come to you today Teach all of us how to follow you. When we speak too much, teach us to listen. When we worry about the things in life, teach us to trust in you. For you are the way, the truth, and the life of all beings. So blessed are you, O oh God, who shares with us the gifts of teaching and learning. Bless us for the grave responsibility you charge in us as educators. Let us be a blessing to all learners who come to know now and in the future. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you for our school community, knowing that we can learn from each other and grow in faith. We pray for all involved in our school that all of us may grow as the people you call us to be. May your spirit inspire the minds and hearts of the students and grant them strength to persevere through the daily challenges and decisions in their respective academic life. 
help us seek your presence in the routine of our everyday home and school life. Impart your wisdom that we may continue to seek knowledge with enthusiasm and contribute our time and talents in service to others. As students, remind us always that we need to give time and space for ourselves as well as for others. Even as you continue to inspire us to remain committed at our endeavors and to share quality time with family and friends while enjoying sufficient rest and recreation amidst the challenges of the online classes. As we continue to journey in life, faith, and learning, inspire us to get our priorities right and support others with the same care and concern that we would like to experience ourselves. With your blessings, O God, may we continue to affirm the commitments of our faith. This is our prayer. Amen. children praying. Lord, send your Spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children Lord of the universe and leader of your people, give wisdom to all those who exercise authority. Bless the leader of our land, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves and a blessing to other nations of the earth. Lord, keep this nation under your care. To all who have executive and administrative authorities, Grant wisdom and grace in the exercise of their duties. To those who make our laws, give courage, wisdom, and foresight to provide for the needs of all our people and to fulfill our obligations in the community of nations. To the judges and officers of our courts, give understanding and integrity that human rights may be safeguarded and justice served. Finally, teach us to rely on your strength so that we may serve you faithfully in our generation and to honor your holy name. For yours is the kingdom, Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Amen. Let us pray. We rejoice and give you thanks, O Lord for this opportunity to worship with you together with our family and loved ones and our sisters and brothers around the world as we also join the Akuka, the United Board, and our very own dear old Silliman University as they culminate their joint consultation and as they celebrate its anniversary celebrations. We join with them in this triumphal and victorious celebration of those years of faithfulness not only in their service to you, but most importantly, in how you have been faithful to these institutions for ruling, guiding, and leading them towards their higher calling in the ministry of nurturing and educating your people following the values and teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. May you continue to lead them and bless every member of this association, the colleges and universities, as they remain true and faithful to their calling, as they follow and abide the leading of your Holy Spirit, especially in these difficult times. O oh God, as they have lifted their prayers before you, interceding the concerns of your children and the community around the world, we too join them in their prayers. O oh Lord, we continue to plead for empowerment, strength, and inspiration to carry on the challenges of your mission and ministry, especially in this period of a prolonged pandemic. 
We pray that you enable your church to live up to her calling, to declare and pronounce the word of salvation for all, and challenge and exhort people to live out a truly reformed and transformed life in Christ Jesus. O Lord, in this Pentecost season, we oftentimes have not lived up to the demands and promises and gift of the Spirit. Help us not to succumb to the pressures and values and priorities of this world. We beseech you, O Lord, fill us again with your Holy Spirit. Renew us with your forgiving and transforming presence. Empower us with your word. Embolden us with your truth. Heal us with your love. Be with those struggling for survival, those who are mourning, like the family of Mr. Nehemiah Quixote and Mrs. Myrna de Jesus, as we pray for your comfort and strength to be with them, and those seeking for justice, especially for those who have become victims of violence and injustice. Be with those who remain weakened by sickness due to COVID or other illnesses and disability, along with those treating them and caring for them. As we pray for the recovery of those your children that we lift before you in prayer, we, however, continue to pray for them for complete healing, especially those who are listed in our prayer request and those who are confined in the hospitals, like Mr. Clinton Hubella and many others who are not known to us. Bless and be with those elderly of this church, O God, whom we cannot visit due to restrictions, especially those who belong to our shut-in group. Fill in their emptiness and let them feel being remembered. Help, O Lord, those who have been suffering from loneliness and isolation of being quarantined in facilities and centers and longing so much to get home. Help us, O God, with your spirit in becoming a faithful witness to the dawning of your new creation, where you alone reign supreme as our only Lord, Master, Healer, and Savior. Together with the prayers of your children, and even the silent and unspoken prayers of our hearts, we lift before you these prayers and concerns with confidence that you are listening to us. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, listen to your children. Please rise as we honor the reading of the Holy Scripture. Our scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. Shall we read together? When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him. Then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, 
and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink. And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you? Or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it what that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did to one of the least of these, who are members of my family. You did it to me, then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accused, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angel. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, you did not give me clothing. Sick, in prison, and you did not visit me. Then, they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to me, one of the least of these. You did not do it to me, and these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may now take your seat.
Good morning, colleagues, brothers and sisters in Christ. Greetings from Denver, Colorado in the United States of America. And it is such an honor and privilege to, to share this message with you at the end of your important gathering. I don't know about you, but where I grew up in Korea in 1960s and 70s, we did not have a ship. In fact, until early in my adulthood, I had never seen a ship other than in a picture, either on TV or in the movies or maybe in the college calendar displays. In contrast, the living and breeding goats were easily found as they were raised by many of my neighbors. In a poor country, which was a Korea's situation at the time, goats provided a much needed protein for people. Although my family did not raise goats, my next door neighbor, who was a poor Korean war veteran with four children and a sexton at my elementary school, had several of them. Since his daughter was a good friend of mine, I often went over to their house and played with their goats. I therefore learned as a youngster that goats are peaceful and useful animals. Unless I annoyed them by trying to ride on them, which I did, or I held their horns as a rambunctious children sometimes do, which I also did. They were great fun. I treated the goats as though they were pets, sort of like a cats and dogs. For my poor neighbors, goats were extremely practical animals that provided a nutrition for the family. For the poor in a developing country, sustenance, especially animal protein, was not readily had. Meat dishes were mostly served on special occasions such as holidays and birthdays and ancestor veneration days. Bovine dairy products like a cheese were not a major part of the Korean diet until recently. So goat milk was an excellent source for protein, which cost almost nothing to the poor. What about sheep then? I don't have much to say about them since they were not around. Things that I know about sheep are not from firsthand experience. Rather, it is primarily from other stories about them. For example, my late mother-in-law, Margaret Elaine Archer, a very good Methodist, a lifelong Methodist, that grew up on a farm in Ohio. She rolled her eyes whenever ministers likened the Jesus to a shepherd and extolled the virtues of a sheep like Christians. Elaine opined that sheep had no merit when it comes to smarts. For example, when sheep would come to a corner in the pasture's fence, they would stand there and ba, waiting for her to free them by turning them about, which was her job after she came back from school. They were clueless about the ease of backing up and turning themselves around. And so the quandary for me, while growing up in Korea, the church cheered for sheep as models for Christian discipleship. Goats, on the other hand, even though I adored goats, I was taught that they were bad. As a young Christian, I did my best to be the best possible sheep. Every morning at five o'clock, I went to the early morning prayer service before I went to school. A good sheep should pray loud and hard, I was told, so I did. I never missed the church, a Sunday school or a youth group. I sang in the choir and volunteered as a Sunday school assistant, even as a high schooler. I read the Bible every day. I repeatedly won Bible quiz and verse memorization contest. I also participated in a prison ministry and helped with everything that my church needed. However, when I was in a senior high school, I suspected that something was not quite right. I was nominated to be the president of our youth group, which was very active by my peers. But my education minister told the youth group that I could not be the president. As a girl, to be the president was out of question. Even though I was the church's most active go-getter, including adults, I was destined to be a god because I was not a boy. Although heartbroken, I obeyed the decree. I had a sense of a 
call to ordain the ministry after having spiritual experiences, multiple of them. That is very clear for me that it came from God since I was 13 years old. So I believe that listening to my minister was a good training for my future ministry. Whenever I had questions about church life, generally, I was told to be a gentle sheep, faithfully following the lead of the shepherd, and I did. However, I finally arrived at the realization that no matter what I did and how hard I tried and prayed, I was not to be a sheep. The denomination in which I grew up, which is a very progressive one, Methodist, told me that I could not pursue ordination, which was only for men. I felt a strong call from God and had a lot of affirmations from my communities and people who loved me and knew my dedication. But I could not say yes to God. Therefore, to answer to God, I had to leave home and came to another country by myself. So what is the merit in today's reading? Please do not get me wrong. I do not sidestep the readings plead for the followers of Christ to walk our talk by being friends and advocates for the marginalized and by working for justice and peace to bring God's kingdom on earth. Instead, I ask, what if one is born as a goat instead of a sheep? What if you do? Everything you can do to be a sheep, but still find yourself labeled as a goat. What if your hard work to be a sheep is dismissed? Or what if you are both a sheep and a goat? As an immigrant woman, one who speaks with a strong accent, as I do right now, it is almost my daily life experiences to be treated as a goat. At the same time, as a clergy and a professor of a very prestigious institution, that I have a lot of power than many other people and women, including Asian men and also some white people. So I clearly look like a sheep, the someone who made in American society. As you hear through the news, since the COVID-19 pandemic, Hate crimes against Asian people are skyrocketing. As of last week, the reported cases is now over 7,000. And I personally experienced that that hate crime against Asian person. After having long hours of a Zoom meeting, I needed to have a fresh air. So I went outside of my house, only a few houses down from down my house. A white man in a very dirty white you know, truck with a huge American flag was chasing after me, yelling at me with the anti-Chinese slurs and saying, go back to Asia, go back to your country. You do not belong here. And he was just threatening me. And so I had to even run to the backyard of my neighbor's house. Even after 30 years of being in this country, which is a much longer time than I lived in Korea, I was told that I and we Asians never belong here in the United States. Uh, We are perpetual foreigners. We are perpetual goats and second class citizens. My and other Asian Americans experiences now force us to ask whether today's reading really means what it literally says. Therefore, I ask several questions and I invite you to ask these questions too. What is the context for the reading? As we well know, first century Palestine was under the control of the Roman Empire. So how did the imperial policy influence the birth and growth of the early church and the writing of the gospels? According to recent biblical scholarship, the Gospel of Matthew was written by a community that appeared or pretended to bow to Roman imperial policy as a survival strategy. 
at least they appeared like they are supporting Roman Empire's uh, imperial policy. In the Roman Empire, Judaism had a relatively high religious freedom compared to that of other conquered nations and groups. The Romans allowed the Jews to worship their God rather than Roman state decreed the divines and Jewish religious holidays and rituals were observed in synagogues. In other words, early Christians who converted from Judaism to Christianity believing Jesus as a Christ, their Messiah, they still worshiped in synagogues. And we also read in Acts that the Peter and went to Jerusalem temple every day to pray, which is a Jewish temple, right? So therefore, as a part of a Jewish uh, community, Christians also had a religious freedom as long as they appear to be part of a Judaism in Romans' eyes. However, the year 70 brought catastrophic changes to both Jews and Christians. When Rome marched into Jerusalem and destroyed the temple, it meant that Jerusalem and its doings, including religious affairs, were now under Roman rule. So the Jewish community had to reinvent themselves. And one of the unfortunate results was antagonism between Jewish Christians and synagogue leaders ultimately resulting in a break between the two because to maintain their identity, synagogue leaders told those strange people who believed Christ as their Messiah, their savior to leave the synagogue and so that they could protect their own purity and identity. And with this meant that the Christians lost their home. In this situation, Christians developed such resentment toward their Jewish kings. And Christians also had to come up with their own survival strategies. First, internally, the church, the Christians, taught its members not to do anything that would bring Romans, Roman attention to the community. And second, externally, the church acted like uh, they were endorsing the Roman Empire's hegemony and expansion and policy, including all this brutal treatment of other people. Both of these positions were reflected in many places of the Gospel of Matthew. And for example, in Matthew chapter 18, verses 15 to 20, we read the church's teaching on how disputes are to be resolved among members. So if your brother sins against you, go and show him and his fault and just talk to, you know, talk between the two of you and resolve the issue. If that doesn't resolve the issue, bring another person, brother over. And if your brother still does not listen, then, um, uh, you know, tell, tell it to the church. And if the brother still refuse to listen, even to the church, treat the brother as you would uh, uh, treat a pagan or a tax collector. In other words, do not, you know, don't do anything with the person. In other words, the court of a final appeal in Matthew's reckoning is the church. But here is the problem. The problem for preachers and theologians like me is that the church did not exist during Jesus' first century puttering about and here, Jesus is giving advice about it. The church only happened when early Christians who thought that Jesus would come back very soon. So they were just waiting for Jesus to return. And but that didn't happen, delayed, 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 and that they formed the community. Now it's called the church. So now it is agreed among most New Testament scholars that some part of the Gospel of Matthew was added by the church leaders later time when they decided to write down what they remembered uh, as a Jesus teaching orally uh, handed down to them. And during the process, some of the things that was not what Jesus actually said was uh, happened and happened to be included in the gospel, which I think meant to be by God's willing. At the same time, Matthew's community took also collaborative stance 
and meaning they acted like that they were supporting the imperialist agenda of the Roman Empire. It's another way of not bringing any attention to them. And instead, they publicly accused of uh, Jews as a troublemakers of the empire. Those are bad guys. We are good guys. We're often early Christian communities uh, said uh, because they were persecuted and they were also protecting themselves. These backgrounds challenge us to reread today's reading, especially the identity of goats and sheep. So who do you think the goats and sheep are now? As the Jewish community and the emerging Christian community struggle to justify their existence, we now know that they probably developed unpleasant communication skills, calling each other with the names, particularly goats, branding themselves as God's flock. Since the sheep were more valuable than goats and were regarded as a more useful animals at the time, being sheep-like was esteemed. Matthew's community therefore was telling itself and its Jewish relatives that eventually when Christ returns, the followers of Christ will be regarded as the shepherds of sheep, real children of God, and you who kicked us out, out of a synagogue, are goats and you will be punished. You didn't feed us, you didn't give us water, you didn't visit us, all that. This unfortunately has a fear the anti-Semitic word views and it now demands that we redeem the vocation of goats. As someone who is in the US higher education, I personally know that many U.S. colleges and universities have difficulties with decreasing enrollment and students from Asia or collaborations with Asian colleges and universities have been very important survival strategies for many of these schools. And also many of these schools are competing with one another to bring more Asian students who pay full tuition to their school. Yet, it is also the reality that Asian students are not as respected as American students, namely white students. In a global educational context, Asia has been regarded as goats for a long time rather than sheep, and many of us left Asia to get quote unquote higher quality education. But now the situation is different and almost ap opposite. Asia's impact, in fact, the ship. So those of us in higher education in Asia or the US higher education as Asian leaders like myself know so well that we are both goats and sheep at the same time, but often we know the experience of the goats quite well because we have been in that camp for a long time. This makes us be uniquely equipped to fulfill God's mission as gods, as people of faith, isn't it our calling to be with goats and to challenge the doings of a powerful sheep in a society that allows conformity? For if we uncritically adopt the church's traditional use of this text, we not only endorse the status quo, but we also effectively tell the marginalized, including many people in Asia, to roll over to be shared by the powers that be. This morning, I brought a handmade coffee mug that years ago, someone gave to my late husband, the Reverend Dr. Archer Summers, who was a Methodist minister, human rights lawyer, and process of philosophy, uh, philosophy professor. It has a picture of a goat on it. Can you imagine a minister receiving a mug with a goat on? When the person gave it to him, she said, I believe that in this universe, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God, as Paul says in the eighth chapter of the Romans. However, pastor, if there is a really hell, I know that you as my pastor will be there defending goats as a remarkable role model for God's reign. Everyone benefits when we unashamedly fulfill our calling to be the best of that to which God has called us, whether it be as a sheep or as a goat or both. For the good news is that at creation, God looked across all the contexts that God had created and called them good. 
whether you are a goat, sheep, or both, let us ever live into that potential in Christ Jesus. Amen. We are shepherds and sheep, wounded and healer. In the same spirit, we are both giver and receiver. Even as we have lavishly received, so now may we generously give out the abundance of our hearts.
Let us now say our litany of thanksgiving responsibly. Holy One, you have given us all that we have and all that we are. Through these gifts and in our lives, help us be the shepherds and healers and lovers that you are calling us to be. Bless this gift now offered before you to feed and to clothe your people in need and for the gospel to reach far and wide. Lord, your love teaches us how radical is our way to understand your purpose and plan. We offer not just these gifts, but our endeavors, the plans, and our vision for the future, and to keep our goals anchored in our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Gracious God, you have blessed us tremendously. You have provided for all your children and never neglected the least, the last, and the lost among us. You remind us to remember them, to be compassionate, and to be loving and kind, especially to those who are in need among us. Lord, bless us as we live our life as an offering, glorifying your name. Bless this sacred gathering to know your will and go where you lead us to share your love and peace. May we continue to be the servants you called us to be, to preach the good news to the ends of the earth. Amen. As we light our candle of hope, the streams of living water continue to provide life towards believing in the good God has promised to us when we feel dismay for God's quiet response to our plea, prayer, and questions. We feel God is silent. Yet God is never silent. His mighty works and faithfulness is manifested in how we sustain in this time of pandemic. That even when it seems you are losing the strength, the patience, tired of waiting when this will end, and yet we continue to place our hope, our trust, and faith in the one 
who remains faithful in all our days. Friends, may we find the strength and endurance to remain hopeful, for God is never silent. Let us abide in his leading as we light this candle of hope. Let us pray. Loving God, you have heard the hymn of our hearts. Walk with us, O Lord, daily, and let us live in your likeness as we do our best to be your disciples. We are grateful to you, O Lord, for this time of virtual worship and be able to experience your holy presence and express our thanksgiving in songs, in our prayers, and in the meditation of the word. We thank you for inspiring our hearts and to remember your great works through the lives of our community. Thank you for reminding us to open our eyes that we may see the deepest needs of people, to move our hands 
that we may feed the hungry. Touch our hearts, O God, that it may bring warm to the despairing. Teach us the generosity that welcomes strangers, clothe the naked, give care that strengthens the sick. Help us, O God, as we unite ourselves in doing the task that you have entrusted to us. In our collective efforts, help us that in our nurturing responsibilities as teaching institutions, we may be bearers of your hope, love, and peace to the young generation and to the greater community. Lord, we also offer prayers for your people today, for those who are afflicted or suffering at this time, for those who need healing, for those who require bread or shelter, for those who live in violent homes and communities, for those who are grieving, and for those whose needs are known to you alone. Hear the prayers of your people, dear God, even the unspoken need. All this we pray in Jesus' name. And now, people of God, go now in peace. Go now and embrace the hope to which God has called us. Recognize Christ in friend and stranger, and as Christ has been gracious to you, so be gracious to those in need. And may God give you a place to rest on rich pasture, and may Christ Jesus be the shepherd who binds your wounds, and may the Holy Spirit give you wisdom and reveal to you the fullness of the one who fills all in all. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.
strive to bring home pride and yet our power when combined is a force to change the world our nations share a common dream our roots are old and our stories, joyful echoings of bonds, forged strong and true. Together we're a universe, we are a future. It was during the 12th President's Conference in April 1975, held in Taipei, that the idea was first conceived to establish an association that would actively and independently plan programs and strengthen ties among Asian institutions. Dr. Paul Lobby, the Executive Director of the United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia, proposed this idea and the participants in this conference agreed unanimously and subsequently created an executive committee which took charge of studying the feasibility for such an organization. The executive committee reviewed then the ideas presented at the President's Conference and formulated recommendations. Thereafter, the group elected a planning committee composed of the following. Dr. Ko of South Korea, Dr. Sutarno of Indonesia, Dr. Job of India, Dr. Agustin Pulido of the Philippines, Dr. Tam and Dr. Daniel Che of Hong Kong. A series of meetings and consultations followed. At the founding conference held on December 6-9, 1976 in Manila, Philippines, the Association of Christian Universities and Colleges in Asia, or ACUCA, was formally established. This was participated by 22 institutions, and the final draft of the ACUCA Constitution and Bylaws was completed. The following were the elected officers at the Manila Conference. Dr. Daniel C.W. Che, Hong Kong Baptist College, President. Dr. Kintin Doromal of Silliman University, Philippines, Vice President. Father Joseph P. Tao, S.J., Sophia University, Japan, Treasurer. Father Jose Cruz, S.J., Ateneo de Manila University, Philippines. Dr. Xie Ming San, Dunghai University in Taiwan, Dr. Wu Chu, Yonsei University, Korea, Dr. Sutarno Satyawatana Christian University, Indonesia, as member of the board, and Dr. Victor Ordonez de La Salle University, Philippines, as the Secretary General. They composed the first Akuka Executive Committee. From 22 institutions in Asia, ACUCA now stands at 69 strong universities and colleges in nine locations in Asia, namely Hong Kong, India, Indonesia, Japan, South Korea, Myanmar, the Philippines, Taiwan, and Thailand. With the COVID-19 pandemic, it is my prayer and wish that all the member institutions will maintain and strengthen their Christian identity. See to it that the relevance of our educational programs will be in line with the 21st century education. To all the member institutions of ACUCA, and to those who are friends with the network, we welcome all of you to be part 
of this endeavor.
Greetings from Donghai University, Taiwan. With the full support of the United Board, Tonghai University was founded in 1955 to inherit the grand tradition of 13 Christian universities in mainland China and to continue the higher education spirit in Taiwan. On behalf of Tonghai University, I express my sincere congratulations on the 100th anniversary of the United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia. We wish you all the best for the next centenary with fruitful dedication and success. May God bless you be. Silliman University, a 120-year-old institution of learning, greets the United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia as it marks its 100th year of service to colleges and universities in Asia. May the next 100 years provide you with more dedication and success in meeting your goals and be a source of fulfillment and joy as you live out your mission. Mabuhay! In this world of knowledge power, the number of inputs go up as the number of people and ideas continue to increase. Then we do what humankind always does. We rely on the familiar the trusted and the personal. That is what the United Board of Christian Higher Education in Asia has come to stand for in the domain of higher education. Wishing this great organization, the United Board of Christian Higher Education in Asia, for fostering the culture of inclusive knowledge sharing and promoting knowledge societies with ethics, values, and trust. Rice University, Bangalore, India, wishes you continued success for this 100 years milestone and many more to come. Congratulations! We at the Suzhou University would like to extend our hardest congratulations to all of you at the United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia. We have always admired United Board's dedication to the spirit of educating the whole person. And throughout your history, United Board has continuously enhanced the teaching quality of educators, helped cultivate countless leaders, as well as strengthened the relationships among stakeholders in the Christian education community. We are honored to be a member of United Board and look forward to facing new challenges and opportunities to get well into the future. Congratulations. Assumption University of Thailand, a 52-year-old institution, the first international university in Thailand, greets the United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia on the auspicious occasion of its centenary anniversary. Assumption University of Thailand has been privileged to serve alongside the United Board since 2002 on faculty development projects through education for scholars within the Southeast Asian region, faculty's fellows programs, and selective workshops and trainings which we have hosted at the university. May the blessings of God, our Almighty Father, and Jesus, His Son, remain with the United Board this year and for the years ahead, so that the United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia may bring joy and hope to all institutions whose scholars and faculty it invaluably support in so many ways. Lady Doak College, 
a Christian premier higher education institution for women, takes great pleasure in commemorating the United Board's 100th year. We know that you have etched yourself a special place in the annals of history of Lady Doe College. As a Christian college, we are indebted to you for your lofty yet practical vision and mission in support of Christian higher education institutions in Asia, for your inherent and indispensable commitment to help us serve our nation in its plurality of religions, diversity of cultures and languages. We join in celebrating this momentous occasion in your fruitful missionary odyssey in growing nations through growing institutions that grow whole persons. Cheers and wishes from Lady Doak. I am Wing Ping Fong from Chongqi College at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. It is my great pleasure to congratulate United Board at this very special moment, 100th anniversary. Talking about history, Chongqi is a continuation of the 13th Christian colleges and universities in China, which United Board has supported for a long, long time. As the head of the college, I would like to take this opportunity to express our sincere thanks to UB for your help in establishing our college 70 years ago. United Board is really doing a great job in nurturing young leaders in Asia and around the world with a network covering over 80 institutions in 15 different countries and regions. Looking into the future, I'm sure that United Board will continue to thrive and do even better in the decades to come. Congratulations, United Board. Happy Centennial Anniversary from Chongqi. Through its long history, the United Board for Christian Higher Education in Asia has supported education of the whole person, intellectually, spiritually, and ethically. Our work began nearly 100 years ago in 1922, when missionary leaders from several Christian denominations united in their shared commitment to higher education in China. They were dedicated to the institutions they had helped create, the University of Nanjing, Yanqing University, and Shandong Christian University. Soon, this union expanded to 13 Christian colleges and universities in China, which led to the formation of the United Board. From our earliest days, the United Board has seen higher education as a pathway to developing new generations of leaders, first in mainland China, then in Hong Kong and Taiwan, and later in East Asia, Southeast Asia, and South Asia. Today, we form a network that embraces more than 80 colleges and universities across 15 countries and regions of Asia. Within the campus walls of colleges and universities of these regions, the United Board has found partners rich in intellect, strong in integrity, and determined in spirit. And together, we have built a network of institutions committed to whole person education. Whole person education is the education of the whole human being. It forms a human being rather than simply transmitting information or specific skills. It creates people with imagination, creativity, the ability to work outside the box and to collaborate and build community. Those are skills we need in the contemporary world. Whole person education prepares an individual for a lifetime of change, discovery, and contribution. The whole purpose of our education is to prepare students for a purposeful life. In order to achieve that, we will like our students to be able to develop intellectually, uh, emotionally, and then they also develop a sense of commitment uh, to the well-being um, of the greater good of the community.
Through the United Board's network of colleges and universities in Asia, we are able to see the varied ways in which they are able to translate the goals of whole person education into practice. It's really very inspiring. From Asia's diverse cultures and societies, a variety of approaches to whole person education have emerged. For example, Hong Kong Baptist University promotes education that fosters citizenship, knowledge, learning, skills, creativity, communication, and teamwork. Silliman University in the Philippines prepares students for well-rounded lives through rich experiences in the classroom, church, athletic center, cultural center, and community. And Lady Doak College in India has introduced Life Frontier Engagement, a combination of community-based action, research, and experiential learning. We try to persuade students that uh, preparing for a specific job is risky actually. We want to tell our students that college experience actually is not vocational. It's a uh, whole person education. So they need to acquire the ability to think critically, ability to communicate effectively, and ability to uh, solve problems, especially those complicated problems. And also the ability to collaborate with other people people of different backgrounds. Whole person education connects these skills with concern for others. I think we have to tell our students that uh, we are here and we are who we are because other people took care of us. So we are able to survive and do well because we care for one another. Ultimately, we are judged by how we care for others. At the United Board, we feel called to bring an alternative set of values to higher education. Our leadership and faculty development programs make that possible by investing in the people needed to deliver whole person education. The United Board Fellows Program develops the dynamic leaders needed to advance whole person education. These fellows learn new styles of leadership, observe best practices at other colleges and universities, and connect with their peers across Asia. The United Board Faculty Scholarship Program helps promising young faculty pursue advanced degrees at Asia-Pacific institutions. They strengthen their academic qualifications, embrace new ideas about teaching, and build academic networks. United Board is interestingly a hybrid organization which makes grants as well as runs programs. We run programs and we bring people together and it's always a very uh, important and rich learning experience. But we also want to give grants so that the institutions themselves can do what they feel most important. In terms of teaching and learning, pedagogy, curriculum building, I think our grants really make a difference. Whole person education forms the core of the United Board's work in leadership development and faculty development, in creating links between the campus and the community, in building greater understanding of Asian cultures and religions. We see our impact in the educators who embrace whole person education, in the students whose lives are touched and transformed. The United Board is not alone in this work. It has always been united with colleges and universities, with educators and donors who generously share their intellectual and financial resources. In 2022, uh, the United Board will celebrate 100 years of service. We know that, that the work that we began 100 years ago is really not over yet. In many ways, as we look at the opportunities that lie before us, the work is really just beginning. And so we reach out at the time of, of our centennial um, to, to say, who, who will share this work with us? And, and we trust, um, not just in God's providence, but in the generosity of donors uh, and friends of the United Board who supported us for a long time and whom we count on for support in the future.
Malagayang Anniversario to Siliman University. On behalf of Parahyangan Catholic University in Bandung, Indonesia, we warmly congratulate Siliman University for 120 years anniversary. For 12 uh, decades, Siliman University has served the society and the people of the Philippines, the region, and the global. It is our best wishes for Siliman University for another hundred of years to serve the people and make the love of God real and enjoy. Congratulations. Greetings from Nagoya, Japan. All of us here at Nanzan University send our congratulations and best wishes to all of you at Silliman University as you celebrate your 120th anniversary. In fact, we at Nanzan are celebrating our 75th anniversary this year. So we look up to you for your long-standing commitment to Christian education in Asia and strive to make our own contribution here in Japan. As we celebrate our anniversaries, let us look back in pride at our history, reaffirm our founding principles, and plan for the future of our mission in education, research, and our contribution to the community. I wish to extend my heartiest congratulations to Siliman University on completing 120 years of human service to humanity. Siliman University, with its Christian character, social consciousness, and wholesome vision for a total human development, has made unparalleled contributions. Our warmest greetings to Dr. Betty McCann, the President, all the academic and administrative leaders, and the students of Siliman from the entire Christ University family in India. We pray that Siliman University continue to serve humanity and inculcate gospel values, especially the values of justice and compassion as enshrined in the mission of the university in all its stakeholders. All the very best and warmest congratulations. Wesleyan University Philippines and the Association of Christian Schools, Colleges and Universities in the Philippines extend warmest greetings to Silliman University on the occasion of its 120th founding anniversary. Silliman is the first Protestant institution that was granted a university status in our country, and it led the way for other Protestant institutions to become universities as well. The gains achieved by Silliman University for the past 120 years has advanced in a meaningful way the cause of Christian higher education in our country. And those gains have been sources of inspiration for us to move forward and to think beyond the issues and limitations of these difficult and trying times. On a personal note, may I convey our deepest thanks to Silliman University and to President Betty McCann for being a supportive and affirming partner to Wesleyan University Philippines. Truly, we praise God for Silliman. On behalf of Assumption University of Thailand, I am privileged to greet and congratulate the Board of Governors, the President, the faculty, staff and students of Silliman University in its 120th year anniversary. Over the past two years, Assumption University has served alongside Silliman University, which has served as the President and General Secretariat Institution for Akuka, and we have experienced the depth 
of intellectual, spiritual, and cultural wealth of this fine higher education institution in the Philippines. We invoke the blessings of God, the Almighty Father, and Jesus, His Son, on Silliman University in this year and for the many years ahead of it. Congratulations to Silliman University on this very big occasion. Wishing more success in the coming future. All the best for your beautiful university. Hello friends at the Silliman University. Providence University in Taiwan would like to send you a big congratulations on your 120th founding annual university. May Silliman University continue to thrive and shine a light on the way, the truth, and the life in the world. Gongxi, cheers. I am Philip Stuller, this PD from Vidya Mandira Catholic University, Kupang, Indonesia. I know that Siliman University celebrates its 120th anniversary this year. As a member of Association of Christian Universities and Colleges in Asia, ABUCA, which is now led by Dr. Betty Chen, the president of Siliman University, I would like to invoke God's guidance and wisdom that Siliman University can take courage and hope to avoid panic and fear in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic. We hope that they can adapt into the 21st century learning environment that whether we like it or not is heavily based on the internet and digital technology. Like the pandemic, this anniversary will become contagious with the spirit of cinema which is wonderful and inspiring to be life-giving spirit and hope for the whole society of the Philippines and the Christian universities in Asia, especially the Akuka members. That is why, on behalf of Vidya Manila Catholic University, I would like to congratulate the President and all the staff of Siliman University. It is a day to celebrate your success and achievements. Happy anniversary! Wishing you more success in the future. All the best. Selamat berbahagia. Selamat pesta. Marigayan anniversario sa Siliman University. Binabati ko kayo sa inyong susunod na tagumpay. Hangat ko lahat ang inyong tagumpay sa faculty members, empleyado at mga mag-aaral. Patubayan na ba kayo ng pong may kapal? On behalf of St. Paul University Philippines, I joyfully congratulate Siliman University on the occasion of its 120th founding anniversary. May God's bountiful graces and blessings mark the celebration of this milestone towards the continuing pursuit of quality and excellence in education, service, and mission. All the best for Siliman University in the next years to come. Hello everyone. My name is Tomoko Ueki. I am the president of Doshisha University in Japan. As a fellow member of Association of Christian Universities and College in Asia, it gives us great pleasure to express our sincere congratulations on the 120th anniversary of Shiriman University. We would like to take this opportunity to wish that your university will continue to fulfill its mission and that it will continue to grow and flourish for many years to come. Once again, Congratulations on your university's special anniversary. We wish all the very best to all of you at Shiriman University. Magandang annyeonghaseyo. Uh, I am Kwang Sub Lee, uh, President of Hanam University, Korea. 
It is my honor and privilege to express my heartfelt congratulations to President Betty McCann and everyone at the Seliman University on the 120th anniversary of university's founding. Seliman University is the most prestigious Christian institution of higher learning in Philippines and uh, is recognized as one of the foremost centers for academic excellency in the Southeast Asia. Uh, Sullivan's excellency was not achieved overnight, but reflects the tireless work and the devotion of its faculty, staff, and students. We cherish our long-standing relationship with the Sullivan University and hope that we will continue to work closely together in the years to come, not just for the benefit of our two universities, but for the good of the global community. On behalf of everyone here at Hanam University, I'd like to offer once again uh, our congratulations and pray that our Lord will continue to abundantly bless Seliman University. Salamat po, kamsamida, bye. Oh, <laughs> oh,